it's all outside of law. And the New York Times comes out and says, yeah, they take old ladies' money with no criminal records. And even after tax money, the IRS just takes their accounts. Tens of thousands of people a year. And now the feds are giving speeches. Assistant Attorney General Leslie Cadwell gave a speech when she urged banks to alert law enforcement authorities about a problem. This is a quote, so that police can, quote, seize the funds or at least initiate an investigation. So the cops pull you over and just grab the money out of your car, and then the feds get 20% of it, locals get 80%. That's federalization. As Black highlights, according to the handbook for the Federal Financial Institution Examination Council, such suspicious activity includes transactions conducted or attempted by at the bank or an affiliate and aggregating 5,000 or more. People think it's still 10, so they get under that like, 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 they're, like they're trying to hide when you're doing nothing wrong. You'd be insane not to have 5%, 10% of your cash you know, in a safe or something. Black provides a chilling scenario under which an attempt to withdraw your own money from your bank account could end with a home visit from the cops. And they go through it, how they're doing it. And again, under asset forfeiture seizure and the drug laws, you see these cases where the cops pull you over. It's usually really corrupt jurisdictions that fully do this. And it'll be an old lady, and they'll say, what's in your purse? And they'll see $2,000, knowing old ladies carry a lot of cash because they're smart from the Depression. And they'll just take it. So if you don't like it, you'll see the judge. The judge will say, we're going to test that, man. This has come out on the news hundreds of times. We find any drug residue, we're going to take your car and indict you. Because the federal law says we can, which it really doesn't. But they misinterpret and have kept juries that will do it. And a lot of times they say, okay, go ahead and do it. Then they'll test the money. And, of course, almost all money has some drug residues on it. And they'll say, all right, we're indicting you. My cousins are all on the jury. And that's what goes on from upstate New York to East Texas. And those are the bad cops. And the feds wrote it all. They did it all. It is beyond Boss Hogg and Roscoe Pico train. Those are angels compared to this. And then the big banks pull up Bloomberg, uh, $378 billion. Uh, Wells Fargo, Wachovia, laundered drug money. Didn't even get in trouble from 2005 to 2008 when they got, quote, caught. I mean, the, they were leasing and running the drug aircraft. You know, the cops will be out here looking for drugs on the street when the big banks are laundering the money by the trillions every decade. $500 billion a year in drug money in the U.S. alone. Our troops load it on the C-130s and fly it here. When they couldn't hide it anymore, they just put it on the news. Going back to Gerald Salente, this is about social control. Whether people believe in the Bible or not, it's the same thing. Where everything's tracked, everything's traced, everything's looked at by the NSA, all these other agencies, they follow everything you do. They built back doors into everything, letting the hackers get into the back doors and create all the financial crises we see with credit cards getting canceled every few weeks now and debit cards. So cashless is a, is a disaster. And then if we want to have cash, because it's fun to give somebody a tip in cash or fun to, you know, give bonuses in cash at Christmas, I'm supposedly dirty to take after tax money and give it to people. I, I mean, this is so sick. We live in a prison in this country. It's like Forbes saying the war on lemonade stands. They don't want barter. They don't want grassroots. What's really behind it, Gerald Salente? I believe that this latest issue about notifying the police with withdrawals is fear of a banking crisis. And that's why I was relating to what has happened to me in the past. They cannot afford to run on the banks because there is no dough in the banks to really cover this. You look what happened, Alex, at the end of 2014, when all of a sudden, Jamie uh, Legs Diamond over there from the uh, J.P. Morgan Chase gang actually gave Congress the language to put in about credit default swaps to be part of the balance sheet in banks. So essentially, all these trillions in derivatives and credit default swaps that the banks are gambling with, now they're covered by supposedly FDIC. And then you add on top of that the legislation with the bail-ins that allows the banks to grab your dough if it can't be covered by insurance. I believe that this is being done to dissuade people from taking their money out of banks and to penalize them when they do. Because I believe there's going, and you know, it's not only me. 
It's Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Well, we've seen the bail-ins uh, in Cyprus and other areas. This is the globalist model everywhere else they've been. I mean, Obama's talking about tax increases by executive order. Totally illegal. They're talking about grabbing education funds, uh, calling them uh, trust funds. I mean, they are really gearing up, Gerald. Exactly. And again, you, you look at David Stockman's work, all of us. We're all saying that this Ponzi scheme is going to collapse. You see what happens, Alex, even when they hint about raising interest rates. The market goes into panic because the low interest rates have allowed these, this, this Ponzi scheme to continue to go. And now they're doing it, of course, over in Europe with, with their quantitative easing and over sense. there. You know, it's, it's one country after another. So what we're saying is this is going to collapse. When it collapses, there's going to be panic. When there's panic, people will go to the banks. That's right. When they go to the banks, they're going to get nothing. Well, it's clear that we've got a lot of special interests that are out of control, and I've studied history. Elites always think they're invincible. The white shoe boys that you call them, the, 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 the Harvard gang, there's no way they're going to get away with this. I mean, they're even training, Gerald, to have the military take over domestically, as you know, and admitting it. Uh, but the military is getting screwed over worse than anybody. I mean, who would have the nerve to put even young men and women with treatable diseases on do not treat list at the VA? I mean, they, they are, our government is so illegitimate, Gerald. Where, where do you see all this going? I mean, Washington is so blackmailed. Congress, you know, wouldn't even stop the FCC grabbing the Internet. Uh, they're just, Obama's dissolved the borders. They're about to sign the Pacific Partnership in secret. Uh, I mean, we are living in just a crazy time. Where is it all going? Again, you know, we're looking at a collapse. And it's not only in the United States. Look what's going on around the world. Whether it's the Podemos party in Spain, whether it's UKIP in the UK, Le Pen's party got, what, 25% of the vote? You're going to start seeing more and more revolution take place. The people have had it. You know the numbers. What is it, 1%? according to Oxfam, is going to control 99% of all the money next year. But, I mean, year? how can the elites then know that there's a class war against the middle class going on by the elite and then try to sick the giant underclass on the middle class and start a race war? That's not, that dog's not hunting. Clearly, the Democrats well, and George Soros, well, they admit it's been released, are spending hundreds of millions total and putting up fake stickers in Austin saying white only to get us all fighting with each other and divide and conquer, Gerald. I don't see Washington's balkanization plan working. Well, it's not going to, and it is going to be chaos and more mayhem. There's absolutely no question about it. You even have guys like this uh, Paul Tudor Jones, one of the, uh, uh, some name like that. You know, they always have these very important names like Tudor. And... Uh, He's coming out, big hedge fund guy, warning about what's going to happen with the middle class dissolving. And you know what Tudor means, that's, that's British royalty, a British house that fell hundreds of years ago. But exactly, you look at the elite in our country, people always obsess over their ethnicity, a lot of them are connected to British royalty. And then you see our tabloids worshipping British royalty, it's like a Twilight Zone episode, Gerald. It is, and, and, it, and it's exactly, look, Alex, the fish rots from the head down. It's a truism. We have become a murderous criminal class run by two mafias. I should say the Bloods and the Crips, the Democrats and Republicans. How many more people do they have to murder in the name of, two, uh, the name of freedom and democracy? And how much more of our money do they have to steal in the name of too big to fail? And they've maneuvered so us into total bankruptcy. They're, they're, they're trying to hurt the dollar long term. What do you think their exit strategy is? I mean, do they have a method to their madness? Because I see the London Guardian and others reporting on what we've said forever. They're building secret underground bunkers and, and castles in the Ozarks. They're, they're building landing strips uh, in New Zealand in the middle of nowhere and, and putting in guard houses with up to 20 armed you know, mercenaries that they give endowments to live with them for life. I mean, the elite have been really good at screwing everybody over, but now they're going to have to live in armored fortresses. That's the scariest part for me, is that the elite are digging in, Gerald. They don't have a clue what to do. It's out of their control. It's out of control. It is spun out of control. Look, tell me one victory in any field 
whether it's military, not since World War II, with the exception, of course, of Grenada and Panama, health care, education, environment, everything they touch, they turn to failure. But they they've been good at robbing us. They've been good at robbing us, making us sick and dumb and destroying the middle class. They have destroyed the middle class. It's in front of us. The numbers, again, don't lie. You have a gap between the rich and the poor that what, according to the Pew Research Center, is back to the Gilded Age days and even worse. The middle class is shot in this country. We don't even have a day of rest anymore. Rome and its cor most corrupt years, you know, the 200s and 300s, had a bigger middle class than we have. Yeah. So the, the, it has collapsed. And what, again, going back to this banking issue, I really believe it's there to dissuade people to try to get their money out. And by the way, that's why I believe in gold. And, and again, guns, gold, and a getaway. Hey, even, even if it goes up or down, it doesn't matter. At least you got something buried on the back 40 and everything goes to hell. Everybody knows gold and silver has value. Well, think of it like this. You're getting negative interest rates in, over in Europe. You put your money in the bank, they're going to charge you to keep it there 0.25%. Take out a German bond, a Danish, Austrian, a whole bunch of them. A five-year bond. You're going to pay this much for it, and you're going to get that much back. You're going to get less back negative yields. Why would anybody in their right mind buy a German, Austrian, uh, Danish bond that they know they're going to get paid less at maturity? When, do you think that gold prices are going to be lower than they are now in five years? No, they can't keep it upside down forever. It is just wild. And I was reading different European back. countries, they make you pay interest to keep your money in a bank. So it's, it's the opposite inverse of reality. Exactly. And it goes back to what you were saying about why they're sicking the cops on us. And by the way, the police in this country have become nothing more than enforcers for the crime bosses. You mentioned about all those scandals in the banks. You didn't see one head roll. And it's the same thing when you go down to the lower levels of the police. They commit these heinous crimes, nobody's head rolls. So they take care of each other. You protect me, I'll take care of you. And that's what it's become. They become enforcers for the Democratic and Republican crime bosses. They'll, they, you, have you seen there's not one major bank? And I love the language they use. They committed a misdeed. No, we misspoke. No, we misled. How about grand larceny? Never do you hear that. And not one, again, not one major conviction under that Eric Holder, who was the so-called attorney general and still tries to play the role during the Obama administration, who as the man of change and hope you can believe in, campaigned or lied about how Wall Street was going to pay the price for their criminality. So the police in this country have become enforcers for the crime bosses. That's right. Uh, with HSBC and others, they can launder hundreds of billions and then they pay $111 million in the case of Wells Fargo uh, on $300 plus billion. And then HSBC was a bigger fine, $1.9, but only because it was Swiss. But that's still a, a small fraction of what they've done. Meanwhile, old ladies who run tiny little Mexican food restaurants who are citizens and things, it's in the New York Times, goes every day and deposits the cash... It's their total earnings and a cash, and then they put it in the bank, and they seize it, saying it's criminal because she put it in the bank. I mean, it, it's just, it's just, it's just rape everyone. It's just rape the little guy, Gerald. Again, it, the fish rots from the head down. You have immorality being brought to the top by Washington, and so the people are behaving as their leaders. Well, do. Gerald, I agree with you that the police in many jurisdictions are out of control, but they are. They have indicted, you know, the cop in, uh, in. Uh, Albuquerque that, you know, said I'm going to kill the homeless guy and dead. I do see a lot of departments, the 
It's an economy. It's, it's minor compared to how they bust out shops all no, the no, time. No, no, I get it. I get it. Especially, I've, I've been up there in the east. They're really arrogant. But, but expanding on this, all I'm saying is, what's the master plan then? You've been a big political advisor and consultant. They, why, they, why is Soros yeah. funding riots against the police? Are they trying to get a class war going? Yeah, they, they have a class war going. A class war has a class war and a racial war keep being initiated by the governments and by these crazy people. Again, you look at what's going on in this country. Look how many of these young kids are growing up with no parents, whacked out on drugs. There's no job futures. How about all those college students that graduate with what? 40, 50, 60, 70,000, 100,000 dollars worth of debt? And they got a degree in art history? I mean, come on. Let me ask well, you this, this question. The, the, the arrogance of government does roll downhill. Uh, and so I'm guessing, have you had police get in your face or be rude? And what do you say to them when they do? What's that? Have you had the police treat you like garbage? And what do you say when they do? You know, I've had the police treat me in lousy ways, rolling through a stop sign and then being nasty about it. Happened over here about a year ago. Yeah, most of them, the local police, I have to tell you, in Kingston, they don't break anybody's chops because they have real problems in a couple of bad neighborhoods and they concentrate on that. And they have a police chief and a mayor that really makes it that. Well, that's what I'm getting at, Gerald, is the sir. media is creating the perception that the police are out of control. And they certainly are at many levels and the system lets them do it. But they're trying to create a bigger perception to blame everything on the police instead of the political elite. What I'm saying is we need to blame the political elite that set this up. But again, you know, I mentioned about the local police. Then there's the state troopers. Man, I mean, you know, you can't go out and have a drink. You know, without them, you know, walk the line, do this, bend over, bow down. No, it's really, it's at a line. Well, it's, it didn't used to happen in America. It's definitely not freedom. No. Gerald Salente, I want to hit geopolitical issues with you straight ahead. I want to tell folks about your new trends journal. I've also got one of your journals from years ago where you predicted a bunch of this, and I wanted to read those quotes. Gerald Salente is our guest. You'll definitely want to stay with us for the conclusion of the transmission. Trendsresearch.com. Go there, get the Trends Research Journal. Attention now. One reason we're seeing the tyranny expand so fast is that people are waking up. There's a lot of good news happening every day as well. Monsanto hit with fine for genetically contaminating wheat supply. Monsanto chief admits hubris is to blame for public fears over GM. No, we've read the studies. Robots to replace half of jobs over the next 20 years. Uh, Apple's uh, Wozniak warns that AI is being designed to basically take over. Now algorithms are deciding whom to hire based on voice. Why are the elites trying to build a world that isn't based on humans? I mean, I know they believe they're going to merge with machines and be gods. It just sounds like more delusional craziness out of the elites. Where do you in the long term see humanity going? Do you have a good prognosis, Gerald Salente? Well, if it keeps going in the direction it is, it's, there's no question about it. You know, we're dumbing down at, at great levels. You know, artificial intelligence, right? Yeah, you know, artificial intelligence is as great as artificial flavors or artificial coloring and artificial food. And that's where it's going. Gerald, looking at the entire planet right now, what do you think the next big hotspot is? Well, I believe it's going to be the Middle East and, and Ukraine. You saw Congress came out recently and, and voted a resolution. What was it, about 300-something? Hello? Yes, Gerald, uh, can you hear us talking? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, you just paused, and, you, and you're saying hello. Are you hearing any audio come across? Yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, good. You're just pausing when I'm letting you talk, and, and so I'm just wondering, are you hearing anything? Yeah, I hear you fine. The hot spots, Alex... I believe are going to be Ukraine and the Middle East. We just saw uh, a resolution passed in Congress to arm Ukraine, Western Ukraine, Kiev with lethal weapons. Great. That'll make things really nice. Well, Gerald, what can we do from your historical research to try to stop this? 
We need a new third party, as I see it. It just can't go on like this. I don't care who's going to lead either party. They're too corrupt. They're too in bed with the special interests. Let's stop calling it the House of Representatives. The only ones they represent are the people that give them money. And the people that give them the most money are the drug companies, the communications industry, the military industrial and cyber industrial complex. What we about need voting with our party. dollars? You always talk about creating local communities, farmers markets, supporting local shops. Is it the model of us wrecking the globalist Monsanto and McDonald's, profits plunging? Isn't voting with our dollars really the best revolutionary thing we've got right now? Right now it is, but it's, it's at a smaller level, and it's going to take a lot of time. It has to start from the community. But Alex, we're going into the 2016 elections, and it's going to be one party or another. And as you're looking at it now, it's not even a two-party system. It's a two-family system. I mean, do you know how many times I'm sick of hearing about Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton? What a joke. What a joke. That shows how out of touch the political class is to think that we would support either one of those people. I, exactly. And they're being shoved down our throat. Could you look at the low, look at the dignity of the White House, how low it has sunk. Could you imagine, could you imagine the white the Eisenhower yucking it up with this Kimmel character or, or another one? It's all a complete joke. All they give us is hype instead of a prosperity. We're going to end the main transmission, but do some overdrive with Gerald Salente and Fullworks.com forward slash show. God bless you all. Great job, crew. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. I'm going to be in California at Cal Jam, and I think almost all the tickets are sold out, but you can still sign up to watch it on streams at caljam.com. There's links on Infowars.com, but I'd like to just hear on air when David Knight's sitting in doing a fabulous job Friday, Sunday, or Monday. I'll be calling in as well and probably doing some Skype reports. So I'll be on the show some as well, at least Sunday and uh, Monday. But I'd like to invite Gerald on about trends and his new trends research, if he can do it Friday or uh, or a Monday. But but we'll see. Uh, just so much to talk about with Gerald Salente. We should also have him back on just to open the phones up so you can call in with your wild card points. Gerald, I've been asking most of the questions myself, but the criminality is accelerating I think the establishment is 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 just desperate and doesn't know what to do. Uh, I don't see it working, but I see CENTCOM uh, and 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 others, you know, declaring war on Russia this week, saying we're now in a war with Russia and sending in you know brigades of armor and announcing that they're in cyber war with them. Even during the Cold War and in the Cuban Missile Crisis, there wasn't rhetoric like this. I, I mean, I really see behavior out of elites that shows. That they really are, I mean, used to, we at least had generals and presidents that had been in heavy combat, like JFK or Dwight D. Eisenhower. They weren't perfect, but, I mean, they understood that they weren't bulletproof. Um, I just think that the white shoe boys you talk about are so insulated, they think their you-know-what doesn't stink. And I see historically the type of chutzpah that destroys civilization. So, I mean, I don't know if we're going to make it because of these people, Gerald. Well, again, that's what I was saying. You know, we need a new way. Well, look at the people. Who are we talking about? Let's put faces and names together. Lloyd Blank, fine. How about Blank Face? Pelosi, not so Feinstein. McConnell, Reed, little Lindsey Graham. How can any self-respecting person look up to these people? Obama, one lie. Hey! Great job. Hey, remember that speech you gave about our strategic alliances with Yemen and how our security and intelligence are doing so great? Yeah, happy days in Yemen. Oh, you forget this one? We're going to be out of there by an Afghanistan before you know it. Oh, you're changing the tune. Look at the people. You want some arrogance? Hey, how about Hillary Clinton? Hey, bring back Dick Cheney. Let's hear a liar again. Put him out on the media. Look at this guy, this General Scales. Yeah, rotted fish scales that is saying on Fox that we need to kill some more Russians over there in Ukraine 
and send them over in body bags so that Putin will get the message. Why put a nut like this No on president television? ever talked like that. That is literal thug gangster talk. That's what I mean. These people are crazy. They're crazy. And no one wants to call them what they are. Instead, they call them congressman, senator, and president. Well, I mean, no one. Imagine Ronald Reagan saying, we need to send a bunch of dead Russians over there. That'll teach them. That was sort of the nuclear war. And the Russians exactly. aren't perfect, but I mean, they are freaking out, getting ready for war. They're scared. Putin stays well, in a bunker most of the time. I mean, this is dangerous, folks. Every, everyone that has followed the Ukraine crisis in the beginning knows who started it. Victoria Nuland. The Assistant Secretary of State. But she's a feminist, so it's okay. If she destroys the planet, it's okay. But that's different, of course. If only the women were in charge. Yeah, like that Samantha Powers and Susan Rice and Hillary Clinton that started the Libyan War. Oh, yeah, peace on Earth. Oh, and what's her name's over there? Samantha Powers? She's over there in Brussels two weeks ago saying that NATO's not putting enough money into defense. So when you look who started the Ukraine war, whether you like Yanukovych or not, the United States engineered the overthrow of a democratically elected government and installed a puppet Poroshenko. You look at the, look what's going on. Oh, it's, we've totally lost the moral high ground. We've got to remove the criminals. Gerald Salente, Trends Research, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Look forward to speaking to Gerald Salente very, very soon. Thanks, Alex.